go. Welcome to session number five about area lists. And if you remember from last time, we were dealing with arrays. The main difference between arrays and array lists is a very big one. And we will think about it. And today will be the first time we will do we will come and implement an application. We will implement like a real application. And I will try to simulate an airport today because I really wanted to show the main advantage of array lists. If we create arrays, maybe you remember from last time, arrays are static, which means they have a fixed size. I cannot change the size and they are fixed. So if I create an array, for instance, maybe we remember integer um, like this, numbers is new int, and then we create the size, maybe 10. Then this will mean I created a container with the same with the size 10. I cannot change the size afterwards. And this will be and will be marked in the memory in a fixed area. So I cannot change it. And this is an array, as we know from last time, which is just a summary. But in many occasions, like in an airport, where I want to store aircraft, I want to have a container which has a dynamic size where I can take out, remove, add items in the list or in this container where the size is changing automatically and dynamically. And this, the first container we learn in C Sharp, which is also very popular in Java, which, come, which comes from Java actually, is called a array list. And the array list is dynamically, is dynamic. dynamic. An array is static. If you don't understand the difference between static and dynamic, please ask me after the input. Today is probably a bit shorter the input because you will have more time to work on your application. Very important, the difference between static and dynamic. Static means I have a fixed size. I cannot change the size afterwards. Every list dynamic means I can change the size whenever I want and the size is changed automatically whenever I want. Today, is the first day we will compute an application and we try to simulate a little version of an airport. So in, in the first variant, in the first version of our, our air, airport, we want to add aircrafts to our airport. We want to create something where we can put in aircrafts to our airport and as the next step maybe we want to remove aircrafts from this airport maybe we want to sort all the aircrafts in this airport maybe we want to search for all the aircrafts in this airport we want to change change the airport and maybe we want to create a menu for all the different aircrafts we of course we can create aircrafts in different ways Today, I will choose strings as a name for aircraft. Of course, we can do, we can create our own data types in the future, but today we will begin using strings as our aircrafts. So one aircraft, for instance, is an string, is a string, aircraft. This will be a string. To use array lists in C Sharp, we have to use using system dot collections. But you don't have to memorize it. You just I just delete this stuff. 
if we want to use array lists and want to create an array list, I can write array array list like this with capital L, capital A, airport, I call it airport, is equals new array list parentheses semicolon. If I write it this way and I have Visual Studio, so Sigi, good luck. I have Visual Studio. I can press the lamp because if I press the lamp, it will tell me, ah, probably you want to use array lists. Array lists is in using system collections. So just press using systems collections. And of course, I can write, I can type in using system collections at, at the same time. So I don't have to memorize it because I don't, I don't never, I never know if it's in collections or where it is. I just know every list is something very nice to use and Visual Studio will tell me the rest. So if I have created an airport, you can think about it like an accordion, which changes the size automatically, how, how strong I press it or drag it whatsoever. So it will change automatically due to the amount of aircrafts I add. So if I look at my airport at this moment, my airport will be empty. So the size of my airport will be zero. But I can, of course, I can simulate something which I will de delete afterwards in the first place to simulate how my error list is working. So I can, of course, I can write something like, and if you just want to understand it, I just suggest that you don't type it here. I just look at it, what I do, because I will delete this stuff afterwards. But okay, uh, give me give me an aircraft for your airport. Or give me the first one, whatever. And then I can say maybe aircraft equals console dot read line. Read line like this. And I can add this aircraft to my airport by typing airport dot add. If I use Visual Studio here again, Visual Studio comes in very neat and I can use airport and I want to add this aircraft. So I create aircraft. And maybe I just want to Maybe I just want to do it for several ones so I can create several aircrafts. Of course, I can write aircraft uh, two. Maybe I can write it here. So if you understand what I do, I just suggest that you just look at it because I will delete all the scrap afterwards. I just want to show the development how to use Air lists. But of course, you can program with me. Aircraft one is here. And I can copy all the same block again. Give me air airport. Give me the second. Give me the second aircraft for airport. Airport two. Airport two. I just wanted to show how this works which is completely useless in the future, but in the very beginning, it shows the pipeline of how to fill an array list. So I have three strings. I wanna fill my airport with aircrafts and I just show how to fill my array list with aircrafts. The stupid thing here is of course, if I don't have three aircrafts, if I have 15 aircrafts, that's already useless. If I 
I want to use loops. I want to have like in automatical stuff. I want to that my computer works for me. And this is just useless, but it shows the structure what we have to repeat all the time. We have to have something which tells me the name of the aircraft. I have to have something which stores the name of the aircraft. And I have to have something which stores the aircraft name in my airport. So don't get confused. This is the array list and this is just a string. If I simulate it for my three aircrafts, what's happening now is, let's go, let's see. Give me a name, an aircraft for airport. I say Asas. I say Norwegian. I say Luft. Hansa. I will stick those to those three, and I have my my free aircraft. But we know this is useless because maybe I want to add fifteen aircrafts. Maybe I want to add seventeen aircrafts. Maybe I want to add four aircrafts. And I want to tell the user, bless you. I want to tell the user how many aircrafts I want to add, or I want to make it even wiser, and I want to add aircrafts until I press something. Maybe I want to add aircrafts until I press X, and that's why every lists are very useful. For instance, like the first advantage. So I want to, I want to create something. So I want to create something repeating itself and asking me all the time, do you want to add an aircraft? And this will do it all the time. This will repeat itself as long as I don't press maybe X. If I press X, my aircraft won't be added. So I can use to repeat stuff, I can use for loops as we know, but for loops are always used if I know how many times I want to do something. I don't know how many aircrafts I want to add in the beginning. I want to give the user the opportunity to add as many aircrafts as he wants or she wants. So I can use, as we know, I can use a do while loop. I will use a do while loop like this. And I will put those three lines into my do while as a first step because I want to repeat those three steps. Give me an aircraft, read in the aircraft, add the aircraft to my airport. That's the first thing. We know the loop is called do while. That's why I have to create something in the end, which is called while, while semicolon. I wanna add aircrafts to my airport as long as I don't press X. As long as I don't press X means the name of the aircraft will be aircraft. As long as it is, isn't, it isn't X. And I will show you the first version, which we use in most programming languages. And then I will show you a C sharp version as well. But most of the time, this will work. It can happen sometimes that this is not working. I will show you another version afterwards. So this means those three lines will be repeated as long as I don't press X. And all the stuff will be added to my airport. Maybe we can compute it already and show what's happening. Show what's happening and to get to know what we use, SAS again, Norwegian again, Lufthansa, there you go. 
Ah, X. X. If I press X, my whole application stops. As a next step, which is always very useful, if we use containers or collections, it is we have to think about something to print all my items. And we know we can print all the stuff, whether with a for loop or with a for each loop. I will show both versions. You can choose afterwards which one you prefer. I always like for loops because for loops are always possible. For each loops are sometimes crap. So I will use for loop. And if I want to use a for loop, I always use my counting variable, which has the name I. So I will want to print after I have inserted my aircraft to my airport, I want to print all the items in my airport. So that's why I create the basic structure of a for loop, which looks like this. And I always use I equals zero, blah, blah. And what's the second component of my for loop, it always will tell me, as we know, as long as I am smaller or bigger. And we know if it's like 10, it's like I less than 10. If it's 20, it's I less than 20. But I don't know at this point how many aircrafts I have in my airport, but the computer knows. So I can type airport dot dot and there will be something like size or length or sometimes it's called i don't know why it's sometimes called different but it always be something very easy to understand count so i can use count and i have to use of course i less than count and the same that's like array dot length from last time. And the last item, as in most cases, will be I plus plus. It's like this. And I want to print, I want to print all the aircrafts which are in my airport. And this is um yeah, actually. I wanted to have you that you that you do it like an exercise, which is not so. You can access this the aircraft from this to so print each item. Actually, I wanted to have you like to do this an exercise. If you don't find it out, uh, just ask me. But it's not very hard. That's the first version. But I show you the second version as well. But if you don't understand how to use the airport now, you have to you have to get the item from your airport, which is not very hard. And the second version to print my stuff is for each. And I would, with array lists, I would always use for each because for each is very easy to use. And I can, for instance, write string x, in airport, maybe like this. And then I can write um, console.write line the name, the name of, of the aircraft was blah blah plus, and I write X. Semicolon, maybe X is not very good, but most cases, if you use it for, e for each loop, you don't care so much about it. So you can use that as well. This will be slightly different here, but not much different. It's also just one line, okay? But I can always suggest that you just can are able to print out stuff in both ways. It's not very difficult, but... Just to test it, what happens now, there is something which is very important to understand and very important for the future. 
Let's see. I begin like with Lufthansa this time. Lufthansa. No one likes Lufthansa. Okay, maybe we like the Lufthansa today. It's German, but it's okay. <laughs> Our German friends. Here we go. I'll type X. And if I print out my array list now, I will see it begins with Lufthansa, blah, blah, blah. But the last item is X. And no one wants to have X as an item. I want that X is my exiting. So I don't want I don't want to have X in my array list. So this is a very typical scenario, which is always the case. So that's why I always, when I enter or when I quit my adding here, I should delete my last item because the last item will be an X. So how can I do it? In many cases, I just write, for instance, I can write int index. I can, I can give it a variable. I just show you some stuff. Int index. And I can say index is array airport as airport dot count. Many people would say like this, index is airport count. This is like the amount of the data. And if you have understood arrays, you probably understand that airport dot remove at, there's a function which is called airport dot remove which removes item at a certain position. And if I type index here, I probably get an error. Because if you think about our example, we have SAS, Lufthansa, Norwegian. We have and X. So, and the index is, is the size. The index is the size, the count of our area list. So it, it's like four. And if I want to remove the fourth item, I can show you what happens. So hopefully, you never know, but probably in my head, it should display an error. See? Let's see. SAS Norwegian Lufthansa X. And it will crash because there is a mistake because it's like index was out of range, which is a very, very popular array, uh, er exception and very popular error. And every, every like every engineer and every computer scientist has to make this error many, many times. I did it like hundred times already in my life because I wanna, I wanna access something which is not existent. I want to access a position which is not existent. I cannot access index at this position because airport at this position is not existent. I want to I wanna delete the last position. The first position is zero. The second position is one. The third position is three, uh, is two. And the fourth position is three. So I have to do something like this airport count min minus one. So if I create something like this and use index equals airport count minus one, I will satisfy the computer like here, play again, satisfy the computer, uh, SAS, Norwegian, Lufthansa X and it will print out the new array list which has only three items at this position. It has three items and the X was removed. So it already explains two very important functions for the array list which is add 
which adds stuff to my item, or adds stuff to my error list, and remove adds. And if I want to find out which functionalities I can use in my error list, of course, I can Google, but also if I use Visual Studio, Sigi, thank God you use Visual Studio, hopefully, um, I can use airport dots. And if I use dots, I can see which functions are there, which I can use. And there are many, many very useful functions. Of course, sort is there, which is always very uh, popular. Remove, of course. And there is normally always a function which has the name like search, binary search, where I can search after something. Good. First step. So far, so good. So at this point, and of course, it would be great that you can fill it, this stuff, I can print my list. So I can always copy this block if I want to print stuff in my airport. Okay. But at this position now, we have we have added some stuff to the airport. And in this version of the application, in the very in the very beginning, we add some aircrafts to the airport. And then we create a menu. Of course, in the future, you can create your own applications and you can create a menu from the beginning. At this point of this application, we will make a menu after we have added some aircrafts. So I want to create a menu here after I have printed all the stuff. Console, right line, right line. Here you go. And uh, a press, press one for adding aircrafts. Press two for sorting or press three for searching or four for exit. As I said this time, I will show you the most important stuff. And of course, if we have time, we can discuss it. I will show you the basic structure and combine all the competences we have learned so far. We know if we want to use a menu, if we want to use a switch, we have to create something which has the name choice. And of course, you don't have to call it choice, but I call it choice. And of course, you can create menus with characters instead of numbers. If you want to create a, a menu with characters, you can type in character. But then you have to think about how to create the switch. If you want to create your menu with characters, A, B, C, whatever, uh, feel free to ask. I will use it in the future anyway. So I just stick to the ordinary menu. I know how to create or how to read in the choice value is choice equals console dot read read line. And I know I have to create, I have to convert all the stuff, convert to int 32. So I can convert it. That I have my choice. And we know the basic structure of a menu will be switch. I always suggest that you begin with the basic structure. Never program from line to line. Always program from inside to outside, from outside to inside, from basic to advanced, from raw to detailed, whatever, but but never program from line to line, maybe in one, some occasions like we did here, okay. But in other cases, I would always suggest program from like from here, yeah, basic to advanced. Grob to, grob, fine, groove till fin. 
switch choice. We know we have several cases, so that's why we will make some cases. As we know, case one, I can do that faster, like we have used that before already several times, and I will just I will just copy this stuff. Of course, we can use go tos here as well, but I would never use go tos. I would just use a do while here again. And how many cases do we need? Four probably. And I will, of course, I will, I will use a default value at the very end as well. If I'm able to write it. This stuff looks terrible in my eyes. I'm just not very good in typing stuff. And we have different cases, not case one all the time. So, and case one, case two, case three, case four, like we go. And in the first case, we want to add aircrafts to our airport. And of course, something like this, we can copy this stuff to our case. This is like the first stuff we can do. Give me blah, blah. Give me the name of an aircraft. And of course we can edit and we can name it and we can add it. The cool thing here is it will add the airport at the last position automatically. And maybe in some cases, it's always important to print your stuff as well. So I could always, I would always at the very end, maybe I would always print it. So I could use this block at the very end of my case and printing the stuff because maybe I don't know if everything worked out. Or of course, I can, I can use it in another way as well. I can use it in my switch as well. But maybe it's very useful to print it. But I don't want to, I don't want to confuse you guys. So that's why I don't print it at this time. But just be advised, you can always print it. Just let you know, you can always print it whenever you want. But I don't want to at this time. I trust my application. I don't trust my programming skills, but my application that everything works out fine. The second part should be my sorting. If I use array lists in C Sharp, in Java or in C++, Array lists come up with nice functionalities like sorting. So I can write, actually, I can just write airport.sort. I can type airport.sort and my whole array list will be sorted. I can type it. If I sorted my stuff, I would always print my stuff. I would always print the rest. So in this occasion, I definitely would use something, something to output my stuff. Good. Next. The next case should be Press free for searching for stuff, searching for stuff, which is also very interesting. And today will be the first time I will try to let you know some stuff. And of course, we can we can do it in a very easy way in the beginning. And let's see how we can try to find out a different way. The first thing is, if we want to search for an aircraft in my airport, I would ask. For which aircraft do you search for? Maybe, or give me your search word. Okay. I could write, give me your search. What's your search kind of 
what's your search word? Well, it sounds awful. What's your aircraft? For which aircraft are you looking for? Can you like this? Which aircraft craft are you looking for? I show you one way of doing an algorithm. Which aircraft are you looking for? Okay, first one. And I, I try to use uh, a string here as well. I can call it string search aircraft. Search aircraft. I can call it search aircraft. Like this. And I will type in console.read line like this. That I have my search word. I want to search for Norwegian. And I want to know, I want to give the user the opportunity to search for stuff. That's the first one. I want to iterate through my array list. In other words, I want to go through my list and check if my search word is existent there. So I would always suggest to use a for loop. And if I have a for loop which is working, I would always copy it. And it worked before, it will work another time. I would always copy my for loop. If a for loop works, I would always copy it. I have my for loop now. So what happens now? What I want to go through all my like my items in my list and I want to check if the search aircraft has the same name as the airport at a certain position. And I can do like this, maybe uh, if blah, 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 if something in the middle, what like if the search word is the same as the airport at a certain, certain position, like this, I can begin with something and I can write the aircraft was found, maybe like this. We can begin something like this, aircraft, aircraft was found. And I hope Visual Studio is still working the same way because if I remember correctly, this will be very interesting to, to look for. First thing is like search aircraft. If the search aircraft is equal, equal one certain position. And I can, I can try something like airport at the position and we know from arrays I can use something like this something like this and if we if we implement it or if we write it like this our computer will already tell us something I don't know what aircraft what's interesting because I expected an error but this is no, no error Yes, insert, insert. Okay, I don't know. Let's see. Whatever. I expected that it's not. It's it cannot. It cannot. Um, it cannot get. It cannot get the item from the airport, because in in older C sharp versions it could not get the item. That you had to use it. But here is like strange. Yeah. Let's see. Let's see what happens. So if it tells me blah blah blah. In in most occasions, in some or in some occasions, I would just write cell else, else, and I would write, I'm sorry, the aircraft was not found. Maybe like this, aircraft was not found. This will be a bit strange. In many occasions, I would always do something like this because it's not always very useful to put a whole 
a whole uh, a whole list a, a whole item of a list into a if I would always do like stuff like this aircraft equals airport at the position I I would I could do airport I could do something like this aircraft string aircraft mm -hmm. What's happening now? Oops. Add explicit cost airport. Oh, yeah. oh, that's the thing I, I wanted to check. Okay, that's good. That's the exactly point. Because if I want to get some stuff from an array list, it's not behaving like an, like an array. And that's the exactly thing. That's the good thing. And I, I, I was expecting that Visual Studio will show me the stuff. String conversion, no, not really. Okay, but it's, it's fine, it's okay. I just wanted to show you the stuff. Because if we come from arrays, we would suggest something like this. And this can be very misleading. So if we work with array lists, we cannot use Index indexing like this. We have to use something else, which is not very difficult, but a bit different. So a, a bit. So the first thing we have to change here is, or we should change here is, instead of using search aircraft dot blah blah, we could use something which is called equals. So it's like if search aircraft or if like aircraft airport dot or airport yeah we can like this as well um uh like here no can we use it here so yeah uh sorry like this so huh? and this so huh? to a string, there you go, and equals, that's one function we should use in C-sharp, equals search aircraft, which can help us to reduce some errors at this position. Oh, sorry, I don't need the if. Because if we use, if we use aircraft, or like air search, I just type it search aircraft equals equals airport. I will delete it afterwards. And now we have the stuff what I wanted to show. This stuff can lead to many, many problems because in some operating systems, equals equals is not working. And if we use Java, if we use C sharp, if we use Python, well. In Python, it's mostly working. If we use C++, it's always working or C. But in other programming languages, equals equals can be difficult, especially when working with strings. That's why I can use a function which is specially built for strings, which has the name equals. So I can write something like this. This is the first thing I wanted to show which is very important if we, if we stick to strings, if we use strings a lot. If we use Java, for instance, it will also, it also has another functionality. It would also not work automatically. But the second scenario, I hope, which happens today is the following. If we use this application now and you probably have time afterwards to fulfill it, fulfill it, I want to show what happens now. Okay, hopefully it still does the same. When I learned C sharp, it was doing some strange stuff. And I hopefully it still does some strange stuff. Let's see. Give me aircraft, sus. Give me airport, Lufthansa. Give me aircraft, Norwegian. Give me aircraft, X. Okay, blah, blah, blah. And now, Press free for searching. Free. Which aircraft are you looking for? 
and I type in sus. And as I can see, the aircraft was found, but the another line tells me aircraft was not found, aircraft was not found. So it goes through the whole list. And I don't want to, because I want to, whether it found my item or it didn't find my item. I don't want to that my list displays stuff like was found or was not found. So I'm glad that it shows me the same stuff. And this is very important. If I want to use something and I want to jump out some stuff, I can always use stuff which, call, which are, has the name break. And we use break already in the switch. So break can help us in some occasions. So I test break at this position. When my aircraft was found, I can test it. Let's see what happens. It's very important such stuff because some people will say, yeah, well, uh, this is working. This is not working. It's, there's so much in between. If a program opens, there's a long way from it opens and starts to until it makes the stuff what I want to do. SAS, Luft, Hansa, Norwegian, X. Press free, SAS. The aircraft was found and it jumps out again, which is very important. I That's the first way of testing it. So I test it again show okay maybe it's working for Lufthansa as well SAS Lufthansa and Norwegian debugging very important three which aircraft are you looking for Lufthansa and we see aha uh -huh, okay aircraft was not found aircraft was found it's still something in between, which is not perfect. But I think you can you can figure it out what we have to do here. It's very important as well. So always use breaks and continue uh, breaks in if you want to jump out some stuff. That's case free, and we have some minutes to go uh, before before you have time to work on the application further to pimp your application. It's like. In many, in many, in many occasions, I would always include a print in my menu. I would always use or for for printing, printing the aircraft and five for exit. I would always include something or printing, which is very important in some, in some occasions. So I would always include a case five for printing, which is very easy because then I can print all the time. I can print like this and I just copy my for each loop or my for loop I just copy it into my case here. The next thing we have to pimp and you can search for uh, and you can work on is another do why. Maybe you want to work with go to's which are not suggested or which are not advised, but of course you can work with go to's as well. Or of course you work again with a do while. Because we want to repeat the menu. We want to repeat the menu. So we say, do, here we go. I delete the second curly bracket here and insert it after my menu. Be careful. This can be already very, very hard to find. That's why commenting is very important while choice unequals for instance uh what is five i think five is my 
break. No, not five, it's six isn't it? or five for printing the aircrafts and five like said, five. Here we go. It just here. five is exit. And five, I jump out of my application again. Of course, this is already a bit faster because we have used this scenario many times already. So of course, for you guys, this can be a bit tricky. That's why I will clean up this code a bit and make a bit and make it a bit nicer for you guys. So there you go. Break, of course. There we go. And then we have all the stuff we need. For many of you, or maybe for some of you, it's always already very interesting to know. And maybe interesting that we don't create an, some aircrafts in the very beginning, that we would begin with something, with a menu, and then we would do our stuff. I would always suggest, of course, you could try, you could try to create a menu from the very beginning, and then you do all the stuff, which can lead to some problems, which you probably will see. But uh, I would just suggest if you want to do it with a, with, to begin with a menu, you just can do it. But in our occasion, it was very important to create some aircrafts in the very, very beginning that we have some items in the beginning. And then you then can add stuff to our airport. It's very important for you guys to understand that there are many functionalities in my airport which i can use so if i'm wondering which functionalities i can use i always just type the every list and press dot and there are many many ways to choose clear stuff to clear all the array list to delete all the stuff but also very important is the removing stuff because there are different versions of removing stuff if you want to remove something at a certain position you will work with remove at yeah marcus yeah yeah one of them is contains and contains exactly yeah, so we have the for loop now we go through the whole area list but we could just write airport that's exactly perfect. perfect thank you thank you and the second one is if you want to remove something at the position use remove at if you want to remove an item directly, you can use remove. And if you want to, thank you, Marcus, if you want to just want to know if you have something in your area list, an item, you can use contains, which is also very useful. The way I was showing the, the searching was therefore because searching is very important in algorithms and what is a search a search is we go through some stuff and then we look for the searching item and if we want to implement a search by ourselves we can use it like this and i would always suggest that you are able to do it and if you just want to if you just want to find out if there's something in the list or not, you can use something which has a Boolean as a return, which means it tells me yes or no. And this is contains. And there are other stuff I have never used before. I've never used get enumerator, whatever, or get hash code. But I have already used, I've also used something which is a reverse. If you want to create something and you want to reverse the whole order, which can be very useful as well, you can use reverse. So I can only suggest that you build your airport in this way further, how you like it, and you create the airport in this way uh, that you use all the functionalities of an array list. 
some stuff can be very, very, very useful. For instance, sort is always very useful, but also other stuff. So I'm stopping my input now and I'm here until half past five for you guys and help you for your, with your problems. Cool.